The theme for this month is the superpower of uncertainty. The superpower of uncertainty. And that's so apropos for what's happening in our community, not to mention what's happening in the world today, and probably in our personal lives too. A lot of uncertainty is going on. A lot of uncertainty is going on, and there's a superpower of uncertainty that's happening. Uncertainty means something that can't be relied on or something that's not known or something that you can't be sure of. The, the not known part is what keeps us, can, can kind of knock us off kelter. It's like the not know. I call it living in the not know. That's a scary place to be, not knowing, not being sure, can't depend on, can't rely on, not knowing how, not knowing who, not knowing what, not knowing when, not knowing where. Whew, take a breath. That wears us out, doesn't it? But you know what? We've never known. It's not just now. <laughs> this isn't new. There's always uncertainty. That's life. We think we know because we make plans. We think we know because we set goals. We think we know because we have an idea of what we want. We th so we think we know how this is going to unfold. We think we know how this is going to happen. We think we know when this is going to happen. We think we know what's going to happen next. But we don't. Because life, everything can change in a flash. Quicker than that. Quicker than that, everything can change just like that. So we never have known. But we fool ourselves into thinking that we do. So I'm inviting you today to just become comfortable with the not know. Become comfortable with, with just not knowing. Just not knowing. It requires trust underneath all that. It requires faith underneath all that. And that brings me to my topic today, which is the miracle and grace of being prayed up. Take a breath. The miracle and grace of being prayed up. Being prayed up. You know, the only thing that ever needs to be healed is our sense of separation from God. And being prayed up brings us back into alignment. We can never be separate, but when we are prayed up, we are in alignment. When we are prayed up, we are in that place of at one meant with God. And then things flow, and then it's a lot easier to be in the not know. It's a lot easier to be in that place of uncertainty. The, the, the uncertainty always, always, always reminds me of what it's like to be in earthquake country. You know, when I don't know if you've been in an earthquake. Uh, that's a pretty uncertain feeling when, the, when your foundation is shaking, when everything beneath you is shaking, there's nothing that's steady, there's nothing that's sturdy. That's a not no place, and that's a place of uncertainty. Places like that, times like that, th that's when we need to be prayed up. We need to be connected with our source. We need to be at one with the one, the only one. My favorite story of being prayed up and my favorite memory of being prayed up, even though I try to stay prayed up as much as I can. Uh, but my favorite memory is years ago, I went to a, I was on a retreat. I was in seminary and I, I was on a week long retreat. And we had been back up in the woods, back, you know, back up in the forest for a week. And it was wonderful. We were surrounded by like minds and loving presences and prayer and meditation and journaling and and speaking softly and silence and all the stuff you do on a retreat. It was just really wonderful. And so I, 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 I left there feeling just filled with the spirit and just, just feeling really, really good. And I lived at that time, I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, and the retreat was in Western New York, up around Buffalo. And I was driving down Highway 90, headed back to Cleveland on Sunday afternoon. And I was driving my red Jeep that I told you all about that had gotten stolen that I love so much. But, and at that time it was even newer. And um, so I was driving home and I was talking to my sister on the phone, on my cell phone, and something, something just told me, put that phone down. And so I said to her, I gotta go, God, I need to hang up, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. And it's Sunday afternoon, so there were a lot of tractor trailers 
going on, on the highway also. There were about four or five of them in the right lane, and there were other cars also. But I was very aware of these tractor trailers that were driving so slowly and wondering what on earth, what, what was happening? Why were they driving so slowly? And so I decided I'm not going to stay behind them. I'm going to pass them. So I hop out into the left lane, and I head, I head passing lane, and I head down the highway. And there were a couple of other cars ahead of them, and everybody was driving slowly. And I couldn't figure out why I'm the only one who knows to drive faster. <laughs> I'm the only one who knows how to drive. <laughs> so I look up and I focus and I become aware that coming down the highway in my lane headed toward me is a white van. Going about as fast as I was going. And so my first response, honestly, I tell you this, I'm not kidding. My first response was to grab, the, grab for the, the gear shift, and I kept looking for fly. <laughs> but that was, that was my response. I was looking for fly. There's got to be a fly button, because that's the only way I'm going to get over this van that's coming here. And these trucks are all along, uh, all along this side of me. There's a narrow shoulder over here to the left, so there's nothing for me to do but fly. And I couldn't figure out how, how to get it into fly. And I realized that there was nothing I could do. But keep going. My, I had the immediate thought of pulling over, but I was going too fast to do that. And I just took a deep breath, and I said, OK, God. OK, God. Take a breath. I said, OK, God. That's something I say frequently. And that van was coming toward me, and I was going. And when it got perilously close to me, it moved over to the shoulder and kept driving past me. The driver didn't break his speed. He didn't look at me. He never even looked in my direction. I don't know that he even saw me, because he was talking to a passenger in the, in the van with him. He, moved, he didn't swerve. He just moved over and kept driving. I looked in my rearview mirror and I saw all the trucks had pulled over. All the cars had pulled over. They pulled over because of this impending crash that they knew was going to happen. And I kept straight down highway in my lane without breaking my speed either. I was so aware that God had created a space for me. I was so aware that God had created a space for me. I have to say that again. I was so aware that God had created a space for me. I was so aware that God had done what my grandmother used to say, that God makes a way out of no way. I was so aware that a way had been made out of no way. There was no reason for that car coming toward me as fast as it was and me headed toward it as fast as I was and all that traffic over there and all that. There was no reason for it to just move over. It didn't rush over. It just moved over and kept going. That was one of the most awesome experiences I've ever had. And I knew immediately what had happened. My teacher, Michael, Beck Michael Beckwith, used to say, stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. You got to stay prayed up. He used to tell us that all the time. You got to stay prayed up. Because when situations like that come, when emergencies come, when, 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 when the ground starts to shake underneath your feet, you don't have time to get on your knees and do the Lord's Prayer or treatment or whatever it is you do. You don't have time to go into the closet. You don't have time to think about it. But when you already prayed up, you just make that connection. And having, having been at that retreat for that week, I was in that consciousness of being prayed up. And that's what happened. I, you know, once I figured out I couldn't get my car and fly, <laughs> then I did, I did what I knew to do. Okay, God, 
that's, that's sort of the little uh, shortcut language I have with God sometimes. I just say, okay, God, that means this is on you. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I know you do. So here, here it is. That was an okay God moment. And God did what God does. God is always being God. No matter what our emotional storm or objective situation may be. That's what Ernest Holmes says. God is always being God. God is always God. No matter what our objective storm or emotional, no matter what our emotional storm or objective situation may be. God was just being itself. And because I was in alignment with it, I was just in that place where God was being itself in my life as my life. I can't tell you that I wasn't shaken by that experience. Um, I, I was about 40 miles from home and I, I think I, I drove home just becoming more and more aware of what happened, of the miracle of that, and the miracle of being prayed up, and what that really means. Being prayed up is about so much more than prayer it's about so much more than prayer. And when we talk, and, and, and when you talk about uncertainty, it's pretty uncertain to know what you're going to do when you're headed down the highway going 70 miles an hour in one lane and here comes a car towards you doing 70 miles an hour in one lane. And you're, that's a pretty uncertain situation about what's going to happen there. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, modify the, the, the theme a little bit and talk about the superpower in uncertainty. God is the superpower in uncertainty. And that superpower is always right where we are. That superpower is our very life. That superpower is always guiding us, directing us, protecting us, keeping us safe. And what all we have to do is just stay in alignment with it. Just stay in alignment with it, with our spiritual practice. We have to, and, and being prayed up, as I said, is not just about prayer. It's about the quality of our connection with God, about the quality of our connection. And the more we engage in our spiritual practice, the better the quality of our connection with God. We know how to get there in a, in a flash. In fact, we never really leave there. But we know how to consciously be there when we are in that place of just alignment and, and constantly aligning. And so prayer is one one, the first thing in being, in being prayed up is prayer, of course. Prayer. Knowing that whatever kind of prayer you do, however you pray. Prayer. Just speaking the word of truth. Living in truth. Because not only do you speak the word, you, you live it also. You speak the word of prayer and then you walk in the direction of your prayer. That's how you live it. You can't, preach, you can't speak the word for, of truth for one thing and then do something different over here. That doesn't work. Prayer is all in alignment. You pray. You pray, recognizing that every word is a prayer. Every word you speak is a prayer. Prayers are always being answered. Make sure the words you're speaking is what you want and how you want to live your life, how you, what you want to experience. Being prayed up. And also recognizing that prayer has to be your first stop, not your last resort. Prayer is not your, when all else fails, I guess I'll pray. <laughs> I have a, I have a close, close person, person close to me who says that a lot. I've done everything I know how. I guess I just have to pray now. <laughs> no. We pray first. First stop, God. Not last resort. First stop, God. First stop, God. That's, that's how we heal that sense of separation. Because we, we, we know that we're never out of God's presence. We're just in our minds and in our consciousness, we may be. But we're never out of God's presence. And what we want to do is just constantly bring ourselves back into alignment with that. Bring ourselves back into alignment with it. We do that with our prayer. We do that with the words that we speak. We speak words of truth. We don't, we are, we are mindful of the words that we speak. We don't, we don't just care, carelessly and callously use the I am. 
The I am is so powerful. I am fill in the blank. I am sick. I am tired. I am broke. I am whatever. That's a careless use of the truth. I am one with God. I am whole. I am perfect. I am complete. If you have to talk about how you're feeling, then say, I am feeling tired. I am feeling sick. I am feeling. You're putting a separator between that I am and whatever the condition may be, rather than claiming that condition unto you. When we do that, when we just make a habit of doing that, when we make a habit of speaking the truth, Ernest Holmes says that when we desert the truth in our hour of need, it proves we don't know the truth. When we desert the truth in our hour of need, it proves that we don't know the truth. And whenever we, are, we catch ourselves in a situation of need and we start speaking words that are not true about ourselves, about our conditions, about what God is and where God is and who God is and all that, we, we're proving we don't know the truth. And so I'm inviting you to be mindful I'm inviting you to really be mindful of the prayers that you pray, of the words that you speak, of the prayer that you live. Be mindful of that. Be aware of that. That's a part of being prayed up. The next part is, is, is meditation. Meditation is so important. It's so important. It's so important for us to keep, keep connecting and keep connecting and keep connecting at a deeper level over and over and over again. It is so important to keep that connection going. And it doesn't matter if you have monkey mind. Sit down anyway. <laughs> so what? So what? It doesn't matter if you don't like to meditate. It doesn't matter if you don't feel like it. Michael used to say, you don't feel like it. What does that mean? <laughs> you didn't feel like it. What, do, what does that, how does that work? You do it anyway. You do it anyway. You get into the habit of it. You get into the habit of it. You get into the habit of it. And that way you get into the consciousness of oneness. You get into the consciousness of wholeness. You get into the consciousness of connection with God, you get into the consciousness, and when you're in the consciousness, that's what being prayed up is all about. When we're in that consciousness, that's what being prayed up is all about. And that's when we can release fear, and that's when we can, can really allow our faith to shine through. Ernest Holmes says that, 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 that fear is misplaced faith. Misplaced faith, that's what fear is. That's what fear is, misplaced faith. And so when we can, can, can allow ourselves to move out of that place of fear and into that place of faith, then we can move through our lives much easier. We can just walk that path that has been created for us by the Father, Mother, God presence that has gone before us, making straight our way. When I was talking about fear, I was reminded of, in Pima Children's book, When Things Fall Apart, she talks about, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a young warrior who uh, whose teacher told her that she had to um, go to battle with fear. And she didn't want to do that. She's like, fear is awful. She was scared. Fear is so strong. It's so wrathful. It's so aggressive. And the teacher said, yes, but this is what you have to do. You have to go to battle with fear. And so the day came when the warrior and fear were to go to battle. The warrior was on one side. Fear was on the other side. And the warrior greeted fear and bowed before fear three times and then asked permission, may I go to battle with you? And fear thanked the warrior for respecting it enough to ask. It said, I will tell you my weapons. I talk fast, I get real close up in your face, and you become unnerved and do whatever I tell you. But if you don't do what I tell you, even though you, you, you respect me, it's good to respect me, and you may be convinced about me at times, but when you don't do what I tell you, I don't have any power. When you don't do what I say, I have no power. This is the key to defeating fear. When you don't do what it says, it has no power. Someone said the only crisis we have 
uh, is fear. Because when we're in crisis, when we're in fear, then we, we believe in the reality of the crisis rather than the only thing that's real. So when we get into fear, we start to believe in the reality of whatever it is we're afraid of. We, when we get into fear about uncertainty, we start to believe in the reality of the uncertain. We start to believe in the reality of the unknown. We start to believe in the reality that I don't know what to do. How are we going to make it? How's this church going to continue? What are we going to do? We don't have a minister. We don't have a this. Whatever. What are we going to do? I don't have. I, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough. This my relationship broke. My whatever. My kids are acting out. What am I going to do? I don't know what to do. You know, there's always something going on. There's always something that some way that fear catches our attention. And if we can not listen to it, not do what it says, it has no power over us. Fear for a moment in that car that Sunday told me to pull over into, onto the shoulder. Just for a fleeting moment. God's voice was louder. It said, stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course. But God wasn't speaking loudly. God was just, stay the course, just guiding me just directing me. And that's always happening for all of us. That's always happening for all of us. So when, we, when, we, when we're in our meditation practice, when we, when we sit day after day after day after day after day after day after day, and then we sit day after day some more. <laughs> that's what we do. It's called practice. Some days are better than others. Sometimes the laundry list goes through your head as you're sitting. All the things you need to be doing. There's that voice that's telling you you're not meditating. You're just sitting there thinking. And Pima Children says, just say thinking. And then bring yourself back to your focus. If you see your mind wandering, bring yourself back to your breath. If you hear that voice say, voice, come back to your breath. Acknowledge it. Don't fight it because it gets worse. It gets louder. So just take a breath and bring yourself back. And that's, that's shoring up our connection and healing that sense of separation. The third thing, prayer and meditation, the third thing is forgiveness. Take a breath on that one. Forgiveness is usually the last thing we think about. The last thing we think about is forgiveness, particularly in a situation where you're talking about uncertainty. But just think about it. When, when we're in a place of uncertainty, don't we blame the people that, made, that we think made, it un, made us uncertain or made the situation uncertain? Even if that person is us, don't we start to place blame first? Don't we get a little PO'd about it and have some judgment about it or have some criticism about it against the other person or whatever or some resentment or some guilt or some regret or whatever? All of those are forgiveness issues. So just recognizing Forgiveness, forgiveness, so important. It's a huge thing that we need to practice when it comes to change, when it comes to uncertainty, when it comes to not knowing. Forgiveness, releasing, letting go, opening our hearts, practice, practice, practicing, easy for me to say, practicing forgiveness daily. When you wake up in the morning waking up with forgiveness, when you go to bed at night going to bed with forgiveness, it keeps your heart open and it keeps the channels clear. It keeps that connection unbroken between you and your source, us and our source. Forgiveness frees our hearts. It gives us an opportunity to start over again, to start anew to see things differently with softer eyes, to hear the things that we weren't able to hear before. That's what forgiveness does for us. And so I invite you to make forgiveness a part of your spiritual practice regularly, regularly. And even if it doesn't work, it seems like it doesn't work, doesn't matter. Just keep trying. It's, 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 it's spiritual practice, not spiritual perfection. Right? Not spiritual perfect, spiritual practice. And so we get a chance to practice it over and over and over 
and over again. And then we get a chance to practice it some more. And so I'm going to invite you to turn within in just this moment and just, just close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath. Just with regard to forgiveness. And just, just see if, if you have any of those feelings that I described, feeling of anger or, or unrest or guilt or regret or blame or shame or judgment or resentment, any of that. Just tap into that feeling. Take a breath. Identify the feeling. And then trace it back to a person. See if you can connect it to a name or a face or a situation or a circumstance. Take a breath. Follow the feeling. See where it takes you. See to whom it takes you. Take a breath. Now lock into that feeling and that person or that feeling and that event. And take a breath and just say silently to yourself, I forgive you. Take a breath. I forgive you. Think about the event, the feeling, the person, yourself. Take a breath and say, I forgive you. And take another breath. Just let it out. Let it go. And even if you don't feel complete with it in this moment, this is something you can do over and over and over again. Just take a breath and say, I forgive you. Forgive the person who created the change, who created the uncertainty. Forgive the uncertainty itself. Forgiveness. Releasing. Letting go. Opening your heart. So just breathe your way back into this time and space. Opening your eyes whenever you're ready. And just know that in the midst of what's happening here right now, God is. In the midst of any uncertainty that you're experiencing in your life, God is. Let there not be a time when God is not on your mind. And I don't mean walking around consciously thinking about and talking about God all the time, but just when God's on your mind all the time, you feel that presence all the time. You're enveloped in God all the time. You know that you aren't walking alone. I don't know, I don't care what, what the situation may be. You know that there's a path created before you, that's laid out before you, that you can walk in. You know that path has been laid out by God who's gone before you, making straight your way. And when you are constantly practicing the presence and, pre and, and, and courting the presence, you can confidently step forward into that, those footsteps steps that were created by the Father who's gone before. This is what being prayed up is all about. And we can do that in every situation of our lives. It can be a diagnosis. It can be a relationship issue. It can be money problems. It can be a church that's going, undergoing transition. It can be everything. God is in the midst of everything, and there's no problem that's, too, that's bigger than God. It's just that simple. And so I invite you to be prayed up, to be pray, prayed up, to set your intention to be prayed up, and every day when you open your eyes, just saying, thank you, God, because Meister Eckhart says, the, if that's the only prayer you ever pray, yes, enough. If you open your eyes and say, thank you, God, you pray it up. You pray it up. So let's take a breath and turn within for prayer right now. Hmm. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Even though I know that's all I ever need to say, I always say a little bit more. Thank you, God, for 
the awareness of your presence everywhere, all the time. Thank you, God, for this truth that I know that God is my very life. Thank you, God, for the truth that I know that God is in the midst of everything, every situation, every circumstance. Thank you, God, for the truth that I know that God is the life of each of us here this day. And it is from this place, from this place, that I speak the word for us this day, speaking a word of wholeness, speaking a word of wholeness, knowing that we're all prayed up. We all have the opportunity of being prayed up. And when we're prayed up, we are in wholeness. Nothing is lacking. Nothing is missing. All needs are met in each and every moment of each and every day when we're prayed up. God is showing up as whatever it is we need at any given moment, at any given time. God shows up as the thing itself. The thing itself is God. And it's always taking care of itself as you, as me, in whatever situation that we find ourselves. And so we can release fear, we can release doubt and anxiety and all that stuff that we get caught up in. We can release all that and we allow love to flow and we allow light to flow and we allow peace to flow and we allow peace of mind. We allow harmony and balance. We allow joy, joy and fulfillment. We allow abundance and prosperity forgiveness and compassion. All the qualities of God just fill us up. And our lives are made new. This is what wholeness is all about. This is what I'm accepting for each of us this day. This prayer goes out to anyone on this planet needing a prayer this day. To hurricane victims and children who've been separated from parents. To anyone needing a prayer this day. As the circle of prayer is opened up, I pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer. You may speak their names silently or aloud, and you may speak it now. So for all those whose names were spoken here this day, I just know that God is. That's all we ever need to know, that God is. And all indeed as well. Thank you, Father, Mother God. Thank you, Infinite Presence. Thank you, Divine Mother. We take a breath now as I just allow it to be. And so it is.